Wilkes Far, Pennsylvania, Democrats facing re-election next year in states President Trump won are seizing on trade at this early stage as a crucial issue and a Republican vulnerability. But rather than jeer Trump's protectionist positions, Democrats are echoing them and amplifying them, arguing that Trump has failed to fulfill his dramatic campaign promise to rip apart trade deals. When we say renegotiating NAFTA, we mean a transformation, something substantial, not just going through the motions, Senator Robert P. Casey Jr., D. Pa, told union leaders recently, referring to the administration's talks over the North American Free Trade Agreement. For Democrats, Casey's pitch signals a wholehearted revival of their labor roots and a sharp departure from the free trade tilt of the past two Democratic presidents. Barack Obama and Bill Clinton. The change may also be necessary. While progressive activists are highly motivated against Trump and some suburban voters are increasingly uneasy about Trump's disposition, many working class voters remain resentful of globalization and have lingering appreciation for Trump's populist appeals. To win them back, Casey is making regular visits to Rust Belt cities, including Wilkes Bar which sits in Luzerne County in northeastern Pennsylvania. Both Luzerne and Pennsylvania went for Trump in the 2016 presidential election after more than two decades as Democratic strongholds. When China cheats, Pennsylvania loses jobs, Casey told the group, All White Men, at Local 44, a sheet metal workers outpost. We have to be much tougher in going after the cheaters of the world. Casey is following a playbook laid out by Senate Minority Leader Charles E. Schumer, DNY. As Schumer stares down a difficult 2018 election map for Democrats and tries to upend Republicans' 52 seat control of the Senate, he has urged his colleagues to bring trade to the fore. Nothing, nothing is more central, Schumer said last month at a news conference announcing proposals that included creating a trade prosecutor to supplement the work of the U.S. Trade Representative and a bevy of measures to stifle foreign competition and block overseas investments. Schumer added, The problem is President Trump has talked a good game and done virtually nothing on trade but study it. We need action. A Schumer called China a rapacious trade partner. Standing alongside The New Yorker were several Democratic senators running next year in states Trump carried, Casey, Joe Manchin III, W. Virginia, Joe Donnelly, Indiana, Tammy Baldwin, Wisconsin, and Debbie Stabenow, Michigan. House Democrats, who see a chance to take back control of their chamber if Trump's approval rating sinks, are also on board. Last month their leadership and Schumer jointly unveiled a better deal agenda that pledged to crack down on trade practices. The effort has been countered by Republicans. Donnelly, in particular, has been targeted by the National Republican Senatorial Committee as Mexico Joe over his past work for a family-run business that manufactured products in that country. Donnelly has since sold his stock in the company. Donnelly met late last month with steelworkers in Indiana, a state Trump won by 19 percentage points, to assure them he was on their side. I voted against every bad trade deal that's come along, he said. But the GOP response beyond opposition research and allegations of hypocrisy has been scattered. Republican congressional leaders remain leery of Trump's eagerness to impose tariffs and continue to embrace free trade. I'm a little concerned about some of the trade rhetoric, not only by the president, who succeeded, but by the people who were running against him, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, RKY, said last month at the Kentucky State Fair. We still have a selling job to most Americans that trade is a winner for America. We've been a great trading nation going back to the founding of the country. The Democrats' push comes as Trump struggles to follow through on his ambitions to overhaul trade policy. Early moves by the administration, withdrawing the United States from the Trans Pacific Partnership in January and appointing Robert E. Lighthizer, who has a protectionist bent, as U.S. Trade Representative, have been followed by a string of fits and starts. Trump authorized Lighthizer last month to consider investigating China's trade policies on intellectual property but it could take a year for a decision on a formal probe to be made. Proposed steel tariffs have stalled amidst squabbles, 
and Trump's Manufacturing Council was disbanded in the wake of an uproar over the president's equivocal response to violence during rallies by white supremacists in Charlottesville. Inside the White House, there is tumult over the direction of policy. Stephen K. Bannon, who was the administration's ardent advocate for nationalist trade policies, has left his position as Trump's chief strategist. National Economic Coup